Hello guys and welcome to the first episode of Renewing the Bond. So before this series I got the bond in free to play and you can see how I did that in my previous series called From Tutorial Island to a Bond. So the first episode of the series will be the first week after using the bond and the second week will be episode 2. And the episode 2 comes next week and my goal is to make another bond and a little bit extra money so that it's not that hard to make the second bond in the second time I get the bond again. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. So first I wanted to try out this really cool method. I have been wanting to try this out for a really long time. I just didn't know if I should do this on my main, but gladly I was able to wait until this series because this method is very cool. So I started out by buying 1000 buckets and then I bought myself a knife and uh, I went a little bit south from the GE and I started filling my buckets with sap and to fill all the 1000 buckets took me around 40 minutes although I think you can do it in around 30 minutes if you're being efficient but I was AFKing a little bit which made it a little slower. But anyway, after this I went to the GE and started selling the buckets of sap and I noticed that it's pretty slow because nobody needs it. I think the only way you are going to use it is for quests. And I sold the buckets for 324 coins each, which I think is a fair price. I think you could get more, but it would take longer for them to sell. And because I need money to begin this journey, so I just wanted to get rid of them in a reasonable time. And the reasonable time ended up being almost three days, so it wasn't too fast, but I think it was a really nice method anyway. And making the buckets of sap ended up making me over 400,000 GP per hour. And if you're going to do it more efficiently, you can make around five to 600,000 GP or even more, depending on how much you sell them for. But anyway, I think it was a cool method to try out, but not very sustainable to do for longer times. But very good to get some early cash for you. So next I wanted to try alking the Ethereum bracelets. They alk for 45,000 GP after you have put one Revenant Ether inside of it. And as I was trying this out, the profit was around 500 GP each. And I pretty quickly noticed that it's not very good if you have only 200,000 GP, because you, you can only buy four of them each time. So I decided that I will try this out when I have more cash available. So next up, I went and bought myself a house in Remington, and I made myself 300 clockworks because I couldn't buy more steel bars with my money. And the clockworks require 8 crafting, and the profit is around four to 500 GP each, which is pretty nice. And for this method you need uh, teleport house tabs, or if you have the magic level you can use the teleport house spell. And then you need to go to world 330 and use somebody's crafting table to make them. So when you get to the crafting table, you can just hold down one from your keyboard and then click the crafting table like once a second or something. And then you will continue making the clockworks pretty nicely. And this is a pretty nice way to make money, but it's pretty click intensive and I think there are better ways of making money. And after making these, I wanted to try making the birdhouses because I have a pretty high crafting level from from the free to play money grind. So I made some magic birdhouses which require 75 crafting. And here's some calculations about those. It took me 26 minutes to make 297 clockworks and that's an average of 685 pieces an hour which translates into 378,000 GP per hour which is very nice considering that you only need 8 crafting to do this and I think they're pretty easy to sell because people are making birdhouses from them so this should be pretty sustainable if you want to do it. 
So next up the birdhouses. You can make around 1.5 thousand birdhouses an hour. And if you're making magic birdhouses, that's going to be around 75,000 crafting XP per hour, which is very nice. And you're going to profit doing this, but this is also not very sustainable and selling the birdhouses will take a lot of time. So I made 200 birdhouses and I was able to make around 500 to 1000 GP profit each, which is okay, but even getting that much took a lot of time. So from these 200 birdhouses I made 127.7 thousand GP profit. And if you turn that into 1.5 thousand houses an hour, it would be an average of 957 thousand GP per hour. So almost 1 million GP per hour profit. And you get 75 thousand crafting XP per hour, which is in my opinion very very nice. So next up I wanted to do some teleportation tablets and because soft clay was really expensive at this moment when I was trying to buy these I decided to alk some redwood shields during that time. So redwood shields you can only buy 125 pieces in 4 hour time and those alk usually for around 1 to 200 GP profit. So just by waiting like 10 minutes for something to complete in the GE or while bank standing you can make like 10,000 GP from the redwood shields. And if you want to stock up on those you can actually buy them overnight and during the day and so on. So, so when you want to elk you actually can have a pretty huge stack because they are only around 400 GP each. So they're also very cheap to buy. So after alking the redwood shields I still didn't manage to buy the soft clay. So I decided to try winter toad for one hour. And for winter toad you need 50 fire making and 4 pieces of warm clothing. So I decided to get the snowy hunter equipment. So top and bottom and santa hat and a fire staff. But you can check a list online if you want to get something else and clue hunter outfit is very easy to get and it's also free to get so that is something to consider and for food i used chucks of wine because those are the cheapest food out there and before you teleport to the winter toad with a games necklace you actually need to go to zeya before that so i teleported to the pest control and then I took the boat to Seiya and then I could use the games necklace teleport to the winter toad camp. So this is the loot from one hour of doing winter toad. I ended up with 12 kills and the loot is 46,000 GP which is pretty bad. But in this you need to take into account that my earl brawl and farming and everything else is at 1. So if you have one in those skills, the loot will be very small amounts. And for this hour, my XP rate for fire make was 166.9 thousand XP per hour, which is insane. I almost reached 60 fire making in only one hour and I made profit. So it's super nice to do winter toad. And something to note about this, why fletch? Once you go there, you will get it if you haven't already. So after the winter toad run, I had bought the soft clays and I actually noticed that they went down by like 10%. So I was a little bit pissed about that. And soft clay is just so weird sometimes. It's so much better to just buy it overnight for a little bit lower price because it you shouldn't pay like 300 GP each for it. Even 250 is too much. So after I got the soft clay, I went to somebody's house and I made ancient ruby tablets. And those require 49 magic to make. And I made those because they have a pretty nice margin. And also they only require one cosmic rune and five fire runes. And because I cannot wield any battle staves to save money on making like house teleports or something like that. So this was pretty nice. A, a small downside is that they are pretty slow to sell, but skillers will buy them when they are enchanting their rupee necklaces for birdhouse runs. So they will sell eventually. 
and if you're making only a few thousand it should be pretty easy to sell them but if you make tens of thousands of them it might be a little bit hard so if you're really going to camp these tablets you should make like teleport to house or something else like that because they're a lot easier to sell in bulk so for the teleport tablets or any tablets you can make i was able to make 1000 an hour uh, semi afking but you can make up to 1.1 to 1.2 thousand pieces an hour and i just wanted to get rid of those tablets for 600 each which resulted me in 200,000 gp profit per hour but you can actually make like 3 to 500 gp profit each if you are patient in selling them so that will translate into 3 to 500,000 gp per hour which is very nice money for such an easy thing to do and also the requirement is fairly low only 40 magic for the teleport house tablets and the magic xp is also pretty nice so after the tablets i actually noticed that snakeskin bandanas are pretty expensive right now because of the revenant caves and you can actually sell those like from 400 gp to 1000 gp each and because it costs around 50 gp to make one you profit quite a lot and you can make around 1.1 to 1.2 thousand snakeskin bandanas an hour or if you want to you can make the boots but those are more expensive to make and it takes more time to make them so bandanas are a lot better if there's a market for them <coughs> So you can actually make around 500,000 GP per hour making these bandanas. Or if you're selling them at a the good time, you can actually profit up to 1 million GP per hour. But that is very rare and usually you're going to make only like 500,000 GP, which is very nice. And doing this, you can get like 45 to 50,000 XP per hour, which is also very nice crafting XP per hour. So after that I went to complete the Dwarf Cannon quest and while I was there I got myself 10 agility at the gnome course. Only took like 5 to 10 minutes so not too long. And after completing the Dwarf Cannon quest I actually went to do some green dragons. And actually before going to the green dragons I wanted to get myself a looting bag for the bones and hides. And this is actually a very good way of getting a looting bag. Other way is to kill the thugs in the Edgewell dungeon. But this should be actually faster and even at low combat levels you can get it like in like 5 minutes. So it's very nice. So you go to this place and then there's the small rats. And if you kill the correct one it will spawn in this place all the time like every five seconds or so so you get the kills very fast and you get the bag very fast but anyway after getting the bag i went to the green dragons and straight away when i arrived here at the green dragons so these are north of the graveyard of shadows i noticed that they are really really packed like 90 percent of the worlds are full or have somebody killing them and like 70% of those people have a cannon there so it took me like 15 minutes to find a world for myself and this is the place I did most of the world hopping because this is pretty safe it has trees to save you from PKers but if you don't care about that you can just hop somewhere else and because I had the cannon in my inventory I would have a pretty high risk with me so I wanted to do it safely and when I started doing this I was 57 range and while I was doing this for one hour there was only one problem at the very end of my one hour somebody found me and I actually died to this guy which is very unfortunate I lost like around 70 to 100 thousand GP to this guy so not a lot but anyway it sucks and it took away money from my one hour and in the end I profited around 400,000 GP for the hour which was still pretty nice but if this PKer hadn't come I could have profited like around 500,000 GP or 600,000 GP but here's the loot I got from these 
So 1 million and 60,000 GP in loot and I used 2,000 cannonballs which are around 400,000 GP and other supplies also. So the profit for one hour was around 400,000 GP. But it's possible to make around five to 600,000 GP at my level. And if you're a very high level, you can get like eight to 900,000 GP profit per hour. And I made a video on this on my main. So go check that out. It's called loot from 10 hours of green dragons. But because the worlds are so packed right now, I don't see it being very good if you don't crash somebody. And if you do that, you are not a very good person. But anyway, pretty nice profit from this method. And that is actually going to end up this week. Here's everything valuable I have in my bank. So the total amount I got from this first week is around 2.5 million GP. And I think I had like 200,000 GP in my bank before starting. So around 2.3 million GP for this first week. And I think it's pretty nice. Here's the time played on my account so far. So four days and almost 21 hours. And last week it was four days and around 11 hours. So I have played 10 hours this week. So around one and a half hours a day. And my average for the hours is around 200,000 GP per hour in loot. So I think it's a pretty successful week. And repeating this week on the second week would make me a new bond already. But I'm trying to get a little bit extra for the second bond I'm going to use. And if you have any suggestions what I should do on the second bond, please leave comments down below. I, I kind of want to do like a melee based bond because it's very hard to make money while training melee. And melee training is such a huge part of the game and doing Slayer. But unfortunately it takes a lot and a lot of time to get Slayer up to a point where you make money from it. But I think that's a very nice thing that I, I really want to try out. But anyway guys, leave comments down below what you think about the series. Also, I would really appreciate it if you would leave a like. And also subscribe for more videos like this. So next week will be the second week of the series. And after that will be a loot from 10 hours of video. And as always, have a great day. Mr. Grauman, out.